Here's a fluid mechanics question which also looks at the idea of work and energy and this is something that usually students who are preparing for an Olympiad type of competition would encounter as well as perhaps first year engineering students who are doing fluid mechanics but it wouldn't be that common in that sort of environment. Now if you'd like to see anything similar on the channel or if you have any suggestions or any topics or specific problems that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. So the problem is relatively straightforward to understand. So we've got a large reservoir of water, right? And at the bottom of that reservoir, we have a sphere and the sphere has a mass M and a radius R. Okay, and we know that the initial depth of the reservoir is H and then the density of the material of the sphere is the same as that of the water. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to write it like this. So rho is equal to rho W, where rho is the density of the sphere. And we start pulling that sphere slowly out of the water. And the question is, what is the correct expression for work done by the agent, by the person, by, or by whoever is pulling the sphere? Okay, now we can actually split this problem in two parts. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at what happens from the moment we start pulling the sphere from the bottom to the free surface, which is here. And then, so that's from the bottom to this point. And then we're going to look at what happens as we start pulling the sphere from this point until it reaches. Um, until it's in this position shown in figure 2, okay? Now, if you think about it, as the sphere is neutrally buoyant, right, it means it can actually sit, it can float at any depth within the liquid as long as it's fully submerged, okay? This is the definition of neutral buoyancy, so Basically, this sphere can be placed here, or it can be placed here, and it will just stay there, okay? Which actually means, if you think about it, that while the sphere is fully submerged at any given or any arbitrary depth, the weight of the sphere and the buoyant force are equal to each other, okay? So there's a net force of zero, essentially. And if you're pulling that sphere slowly, it basically means that while you're pulling it out, you don't actually give it an acceleration. So the acceleration of the sphere is zero at all times, which means that the force you apply on the sphere to bring it into this position is going to be zero. So you just need to slowly, I guess, nudge the sphere along the way, but you don't actually um, apply a certain force in order to bring it from the bottom to uh, to this position right here. So if the force is zero and if you apply the same force constantly from this point to this point, it means that the work in this stage is force times distance, right? Or, yeah, so right, that's force times distance, which is zero. Okay, so you don't actually use any work you don't spend any energy moving the sphere to this position. And the reason is because the sphere is neutrally buoyant. So the density of the sphere and the density of the water are the same. Now, the um, rest of the problem looks at what happens between this point and the final position of the sphere. And this is where things can get a bit tricky. So here's how I choose to solve this. I'm going to look at the sphere at a certain, at an arbitrary position, right? So I'll say that, okay, I have moved the sphere out of the water by an amount y, okay? So my y is the distance, the upward distance measured from the free surface, okay? And in this, in this particular position, there are three forces acting on the sphere. There's the weight, there's the mg, this one stays constant all the time. Then there's the buoyant force. Now the buoyant force is 
due to the volume of the submerged body, okay, which is just this section right here. So it's the sphere minus the spherical cap, which is outside. And then, of course, I have the force that does the work. And this is what I have to find. And then the work is going to be equal to the integral of f times dy. Okay, this is the definition of work. And this acts from y equals 0, right? This starts... This force starts acting when the sphere is touching the surface with the upper side, and it ends when the sphere is fully outside of the water. So that is from zero to two R, okay? Where of course R is the radius. So we just have to find an expression for this F right here. And before that, I will first of all, find what is the volume of the spherical cap, okay? So the volume of the spherical cap is how much sphere is outside of the water, and that's as a function of y, okay? And that is given by pi h squared over 3, uh, multiplied by 3, and then we have r minus h, okay? Of course, um, we don't actually have h here, we have y, so um, if you have h, you can use it this way, but I will use uh, y as my upwards coordinate, okay? And this is what we are going to use. Okay, so the buoyant force, on the other hand, this is equal to the density. Now, the density of the water and the density of the sphere are the same, so I'll just use rho in both cases. So that's density multiplied by the volume of the displaced liquid, which is everything underneath the water surface, which is the volume of the sphere minus the volume of the cap, multiplied by g. Okay? So that's the one we have to deal with. So the volume of the sphere is 4 pi over 3 r cubed minus the volume of the cap, which is this. So pi y squared divided by 3, and then we have 3r minus y. So 3r minus y, and that's multiplied by g. And that's the buoyant force. And essentially, this has no acceleration, right? Which means that fb plus f minus mg is equal to zero. And the reason it has no acceleration is because the problem tells us that we move the sphere very slowly. Okay, so that's the keyword. So f is just going to equal mg minus the buoyant force. Okay, so that's what we then have. We have f equals mg minus, and then this whole thing here. So that is rho g multiplied by 4 pi over 3 r cubed minus pi y squared over 3 times 3 r minus y, and that's it. And of course, this is the force as a function of y, right? So as y changes, as y increases more specifically, the force is going to change as well. But what we have to find is not the force, but the work. Okay, so the work is the integral of force times dy, from 0 to 2r, as we said previously. Okay, so this is the integral from 0 to 2r of, and now we just copy this in there. So we have mg uh, dy. So I'm going to split this in two integrals, right? So this is going to be one of them, and this is going to be the other. So then I have minus, and then I have integral from 0 to 2r of this thing. So rho g. And then this is going to be multiplied by the bracket. So I have 4 pi over 3 r cubed. And then minus pi over 3 y squared. And then 3 r minus y. 3 r minus y. And then we close brackets. And the first integral is actually pretty straightforward, right? That's just mg multiplied by 2 r. Now... This one, I'm going to split it in two integrals again. So this is integral from 0 to 2r of rho g 4 pi over 3r cubed. 
dy, okay, and then plus integral from 0 to 2r of pi over 3, uh, of course we, have a, we must have a rho g as well, and then pi over 3 y squared, and then 3r minus 1 dy, okay. And those integrals are not difficult, it's just uh, the difficult part is just keeping track of everything at once. So the first term is 2mgr, right? The second term is, let's see, so 4 pi over 3 rho gr cubed, those are all constants. And then I multiply this by 2r, because this becomes integral of dy. And then I add up pi over 3 rho g, and then we have, well, technically we have two integrals here, but let's try to do it, everything uh, at once. So we have rho g pi over 3, and then we have multiplied by 3r, and then multiplied by y cubed over 3 from 0 to 2r. Okay, uh, it's getting a bit uh, long, so I will uh, move this to the next page, and the final term is the following. So pi over 3, and then I have my rho g. So now I'm doing this multiplied with the y here in the bracket. So pi over 3 rho g, and this is y squared times y, which is y cubed. So that's going to end up as y to the power of 4 over 4 from 0 to 2r. Okay. So we go through the v integrals, which is good. And this tells us that the work is 2mgr. That's the first term. And then we have minus. So this becomes 8 pi over 3. So 8 pi over 3. And then we have rho gr to the power 4. So rho gr to the power 4. And then plus. Okay, here we can cancel out this 3 and this 3. And if you substitute 2r in here, you'll see that this also becomes 8 pi over 3 rho g r to the 4, which is nice because now those two things cancel out. And the only thing I have left is this term. So that's pi over 12, right? I multiply the 3 and 4, and then rho g times 16 r to the power 4, which tells us that the work is 2mgr minus, now we have 16 over 12, now 16 over 12 is 4 over 3, uh, rho g r to the power 4, and I'm going to rearrange this slightly so it's a bit more clear what we're looking at. So this is 2mgr minus, now this is 4 pi over 3, multiplied by r cubed. Now, if you look at this carefully, you'll realize this is actually the volume of the sphere. Okay? And then we have rho and then what g. Now, rho times v, this is the mass of the sphere. And of course, we have another r here at the end. Okay, so the work is 2mgr minus mgr which is just mgr. So that's, a, that's uh, what the final answer is, and it's a, right? So it turns out that actually the, the work done, as long as the um, sphere is neutrally buoyant, only depends on the radius of the sphere, okay? It doesn't depend on that height h, because from the bottom of the pool, to the free surface, you don't actually do any work because the, there's neutral buoyancy that takes care of that, okay? And that's the end of the question.